So thank you very much for, for the invitation to this wonderful conference. Um, my name is Nikolai Sorgenfeit-Long, and I'm from the Technical University of Denmark. And I'm going to talk about our first project in my research group called Diawaves, Disarming Resistant Microbes with Resonant Waves. Uh, first, a little um, introduction to where we are. Here's a map of Europe, and we are in the northern part in Scandinavia. By the yellow circle, you see Denmark, and we're just north of the capital called Copenhagen. We are at the Technical University. It was founded in 1829 by the, not quantum, but the electrodynamics pioneer, Hans Christian Ørsted, who was also the discoverer of electromagnetism. So we are an elite technical uh, university with 11,000 students and uh, 6,000 uh, employees. So I've been on this path uh, of uh, the new science of water for about five years, but I haven't had a group uh, until very recently, uh, only three months ago, uh, we managed to uh, acquire sufficient funding to establish uh, a research group. So what I'm going to present today is, is just uh, the beginning of our uh, science, but here you see the group of wonderful people, uh, three uh, senior people and, and, and uh, three younger people. So uh, we work in a transdisciplinary and collaborative way. But this adventure started uh, five years ago when I met this uh, wonderful professor, uh, Livio Giuliani, and uh, he was a guest professor at, at my university. We did some experiments there. Uh, they wrote about us in the, in the local newspaper and uh, it sort of started from there. And uh, as you have also heard, you've heard much about coherent domain theories, and I, I really caught on to that, that thought uh, um, being uh, put forward by Emilio de Giudice and Preparat, quantum electrodynamics. So I spent uh, some time thinking about how could I get into this field coming from a biology background, and then I met with some microbiologists who had an interest in uh, uh, the disease called cystic fibrosis. It's actually a water transport uh, disease. It's a genetic disease where uh, the transport of chloride ions is uh, inhibited. And you can see an image of how it looks if you have this disease in your lungs. You get these cysts and in those cysts you can have various bacteria uh, hiding and forming what's called a biofilm that makes them res resistant to antibiotics, especially the bacteria called Pseudomonas. So, uh, Livio was also part of a study uh, earlier um, working on exactly this problem with trying to inhibit the formation of uh, bacterial biofilms to make, um, make them more susceptible to uh, antibiotics. And they exposed them to low frequency, uh, low strength magnetic fields. So we were asking similar kind of questions. Uh, can we identify non-chemical and non-thermal methods to disarm antibiotic resistant microbes? You know, it's not only in cystic fibrosis. Uh, antibiotic uh, resistance is a, is a major problem uh, all over the world. And if so, can, can weak and resonant electromagnetic fields interfere with and disrupt these uh, resistant microbes? At the same time, we were invited to be part of a, a doc documentary film dealing with consciousness and water, and I'll just show you uh, a short clip from that, uh, documenting our work in the lab. Uh, 
uh, inhibition zones in bacteria. And this was our very, very first experiment. So uh, I was hoping to see some difference. I'm not sure that you really can. And this guy is commenting that uh, you sometimes see what you want to see. <laughs> So, um, also in the same period, we were fortunate that one of our biggest uh, private foundations in Denmark called the Velux Foundation, they produce uh, skylight windows and they are very rich. They uh, handed out um, new grants for uh, unconventional science. They call it the Vidum experiment for the bold research idea that might be excluded by traditional peer review funding schemes. So very similar to what uh, Jill Pollack presented yesterday with the Institute of uh, Venture Science uh, Center. And uh, if you have an interest in working in Denmark or working with me, uh, there's a deadline coming up next year. So if you have crazy ideas, uh, you're welcome to contact me and, and we can see if we can develop something together. It would be very enjoyable. So we actually managed to get one of these grants uh, for the Dia Waves project. And the reason why I put these uh, crystal glasses up there is, as you probably can guess, is to illustrate the resonance um, effect. You know, when the opera singer hits the right note, she can actually uh, break the crystal glass. So uh, we spent uh, more or less the first year to set up a uh, bioresonance lab, and you can see a picture from our lab here. Uh, we were fortunate to find a room that is uh, temperature controlled, so the whole room is uh, kept at 37 degrees centigrade. So we don't have to worry about temperature. And then we have this uh, uh, cylinder here, uh, which is made of an alloy called new metal, which uh, uh, shields from any external uh, magnetic field. And then we, inside that we have a, a solenoid, you can see a little bit on top of it here. Uh, where we can put any uh, external field that we want to apply to the, to the bacteria. And here's a close-up of that. Um, since we uh, are not floating in money, we thought of alternative ways to, to construct our solenoid. So here you see uh, one prototype, or it's actually a, 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 the one we're using, uh, made of, out of a sewage tube with uh, wires wound around it. And here you can see the microbiologist uh, Janus and the lab building in the background. So we used the principle uh, that I was hoping uh, that uh, Livio Giuliani was going to introduce today. I think you mentioned it a bit. The ion cycles and resonance uh, that is given by this, this formula. And it, it, it's, you can calculate the, the resonance frequency of an ion if you know the charge the static magnetic field that it is uh, exposed to, uh, the mass of the ion. Um, so uh, we're dealing with uh, magnetic field strengths around the strength of the geomagnetic field of around 10 to 40 microtesla, so quite weak. And we calculate uh, frequency uh, of these ions, for example, of potassium, of between 3 to, to 12 hertz, also very low. Um, um, uh, ranges and and the setup that we're using is uh, is shown here. So if you, if you uh, if we start here, you can see um, or if we start here, you can see uh, what's called a microtiter plate where you can have 96 wells, individual uh, wells where you can grow bacteria, and uh, and those bacteria can then in, inside the wells we we lower this these pegs uh, which are attached to the lid. And then the, the bacteria are allowed to grow, or they can attach to this peg and, and, and form a biofilm, form uh, this kind of uh, structured layer where they can protect themselves. So we can, we can uh, then uh, take out the lid and we can um, color uh, using a, a colorimetric assay, crystal violet. We can see how much of the uh, bacteria are attached to this compared to how much is in the, in the soup, so to say. And we are using the bacteria called Pseudomonas aeruginosa as our uh, model organism, but it's also the, the actual pathogen in cystic fibrosis patients. And uh, we have another film clip here of the, uh, how we work in the lab. Han 
See the color developing here. Yeah. 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 And if you get less color, it's generally a sign of the bacteria making less biofilm. At that time, we were also investigating a water structuring device, if that had an effect, and uh, it did yeah, seem to have. Like, but now we are using yeah, mainly controlled electromagnetic fields. <coughs> so here are uh, our first results, um, where we expose the bacteria for 24 hours. Uh, the details are down here. Uh, static field is 10 microtesla, uh, the alternating field is 100 nanotesla, and the frequency is 3.9, which we calculate is, is the resonance for potassium ions. And, and uh, the numbers we, we have normalized to one for room, which is our control, so we just don't expose them to anything. Uh, then we have bacteria that are grown inside this. Uh, shielded chamber, but we don't expose them to anything. That means that they experience zero magnetic field. Um, and then we have the, the, the third uh, column here is, is the bacteria exposed to this uh, specific frequency <coughs> of potassium 3.9 hertz. So you can see here, uh, uh, it was a little bit surprising that, that we, and we have seen this uh, consistently uh, now a few times, uh, that uh, being in a, in a zero uh, magnetic field uh, environment uh, has an influence on biology. So maybe that could also explain why, why astronauts uh, have problems, could, can have problems in space since they don't experience the geomagnetic field in the same way as we do and also the Schumann resonance. Uh, but we saw a quite significant uh, uh, reduction of biofilm production here uh, when we exposed the bacteria. And right now, currently, exactly, uh, as I speak, almost, or in a few hours, uh, my colleagues will perform uh, many more of these experiments, so we need to get the statistics up and, and also search the parameter space, so uh, explore other uh, frequencies and, and uh, for other ions and so forth. So that's what we're doing right now. Uh, here's another one uh, of these initial experiments that, that did not show any uh, significant uh, effect of the zero field, but it did show effect when we exposed the bacteria to potassium. Uh, here again is other pictures from, from our lab. So, um, just a few minutes about uh, where we're going next. Um, so, we are also interested in affecting um, other types of bacteria, uh, MRSA bacteria, which is a uh, methyl methylacine uh, resistant uh, staphylococcus. Um, which is a big problem in swine producing countries like Denmark, for example. Uh, and also Borrelia that causes Lyme disease uh, is, is a uh, very um, serious problem and, and if we could target that, that would be wonderful. So we, we have uh, discussions with an American group led by this uh, professor Anthony Holland. Uh, he has uh, published some preliminary results also on inhibiting these types of bacteria and we would like to continue that uh, line of research also. And then recently we got another grant from the same foundation, a uh, more uh, basic science uh, grant called WaterStruck, uh, and its, its title is Structured Water and its Implications in Biology, Chemistry and Physics. And uh, we are inspired there by the work of uh, Mei Wan Ho uh, and uh, the, the liquid crystal properties of water in living systems. So we're actually going to look at, at, at biofilm uh, again uh, on the polarized light, looking at exclusion zones. We also hope to get uh, access to X-ray diffraction and neutron scattering. And uh, we are also inspired by this group in, in the US uh, who are seeing differences. Over here you can see uh, various areas of, of, of uh, material biofilm on the polarized light. And you see that some regions are, are different, um, indicating that th they have a different liquid crystal structure. They claim that this is due to uh, the presence of uh, bacteriophages, which are viruses in bacteria. Uh, we believe that it has to do with the structure of the water. 
So, so we'll, uh, we'll find out more about that. The, the polarized light microscope just arrived uh, two days ago. So uh, we're, I'm going back to, to start these studies also. Um, then we have a general uh, interest in, 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 in what's going on in, in the water field, as we all have here. And I don't know if you all saw the, the cover page of New Scientist in, in the May issue this year. Uh, they say the shape of water is not, lo not one liquid, it's two. And in the, in the magazine they say uh, water is actually two liquids disguised as one. So, so it's not only uh, Gerald Pollack and, and, and people here talking about marine domains. There are also uh, top scientists, uh, other top scientists uh, out there um, that are really looking into these uh, new properties of water. So uh, it's really an exciting uh, place to be uh, for all of us uh, at this moment. I think this will be, uh, now I forgot who said it, but it will, it will be the next uh, breakthrough in, in sciences. I'm really sure of that also in, in quantum. Um, you could compare it to what, what happens with the breakthroughs and uh, in, in quantum mechanics 700 years ago. Uh, with the Copenhagen School actually, uh, so my hometown. Um, and we are also very uh, keen on, on, on assembling people like today, and, and this is a picture from, from last summer where we had a gathering of uh, people from Sweden, Italy, uh, Greece, and, and, and Japan, our local uh, organizer here. So uh, we call that the Water Bridging Initiative. Um, and we also have, if some of you saw my posters, we try to integrate uh, these themes uh, relating to, to water science and, and we use the water bridge that you have seen in videos as, as our uh, image for connecting people, ideas and technology. So it's not only about the science, it's also about the, the, the combining different disciplines and also people who are not scientists like artists and filmmakers and inventors and so on. And also talking to the, to the industry, people who are inventing the devices that can, can also water properties and also bigger companies that are using these devices. And of course, uh, funding is always an issue, how to get there. So with that, I would like to, uh, and uh, A.H. Dogen here, uh, one of the local guys, I would like to uh, acknowledge uh, some of the people. Uh, and as you can see here, they come from different departments at, at, my, at my university, so we even had uh, a guy from the space department help us out. Uh, and I'd like to uh, acknowledge the, the financial support from the VLOX and VLOX foundations. So with that, I want to thank you for your attention, and uh, I'm open for questions. Thank you. I'm wondering, I, although there are just, a, you said, preliminary results, the, um, the control zero field and the exposed, what was the number of the replicate? Uh, this has been replicated uh, four times so far. Okay. Uh, okay, you haven't done any frequency dependence, you just selected one which is supposed to be a... We were inspired by another paper that, that saw effects of potassium uh, ion uh, resonant frequency, so that's where we started, basically. I have many more questions, but more technical, so I give space to somebody else to ask. Thank you very much, very interesting. Thank you. It, it is really a great, great work and great future in real life. But, um, but just one question uh, I can see in the future um, the work with bacteria. But as we have been working with bacteria also, what I, I realize is that um, all the signaling and all the talk that they do is in water. And if you're going to use different kinds of water, I'm sure you can find an effective one that will um, emphasize um, the whole process. But you have to understand you have to understand what is happening. And with all the equipment that you have, and, and I can see that you have a beautiful room about all this thing, 
um, you need to monitor uh, non-invasively the process and to read the spectra. So this is what I, I, would, I would just I wonder whether you have already. <laughs> yeah, just a, just a comment because. Um, as soon as we have the money, we will have uh, aquaphotonics also. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> No, what, I, what we have been talking this, this morning is uh, we bridge, and, and, and we are bridging, yes. We have so many disciplines that can do this. And um, yeah, that's the point. Thank you. Thank you, Nikolai. Um, Maybe I just missed it before, but for your pseudo monitor experiment, until you saw those, how long did you incubate the bacteria for the effect to appear? So what time frame are we speaking uh, about? We haven't done time series yet, but we uh, exposed them for 24 hours. But your standard, yeah, okay. But is no time series yet? No. And you would see, okay, thank you. So, so we, are, we, are, we, we, we played them, of course, in, 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 in but the, the starting phase, and we uh, we harvest them in, in, in the lag phase. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Well, I, I have more of, more of a comment than than, uh, than a question, but uh, it was very interesting for me. I, a long time ago, I wanted just to see how magnets affect the structure of water, and uh, I totally forgot about that work. But recently. Someone reminded me who uh, wanted to, uh, to see the, uh, the effects of um, permanent magnets, oscillatory magnetic field, and ETC. And then I uh, saw that in all these uh, experiments, I had uh, the effect that uh, the, the magnets actually uh, sort of like uh, created less hydrogen bonded water. So it's sort of like that they're breaking the water structure. And that is similar actually to the effect of increasing the temperature. And that is also similar to the effect that uh, but, uh, probiotic, probiotic bacteria have on water. So, so that for me was very, very pretty to see that now uh, what you do, are doing with the uh, magnetic field are actually disarming this bad bacteria and make it probably Probably. act as good bacteria, which is really, really nice. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Nikolai, for your very optimistic presentation. Thank you. <laughs>